mention CSIS and CSE. Um, you know, some people, if you'd ask them what is CSIS, yeah, you know, they think James Bond. Yeah. You know, that's what you kind of related to. Uh, CSE is something people probably have never even heard of before, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, can you give us your sure. what your take is on and with through your experience, sure. what is CSIS so people will know and what is CSE? What is the difference? What do they do? Okay, I'll start with CSE. So, so CSE is Communication Security Establishment. It was created back in 1946, if memory serves me correct, because I was there for the 50th anniversary. It yeah. was essentially grew out of the, the out of the Second World War jazz, and this was a it's an organization that collects foreign signals. What it, what that means is that it, it hoovers up, and you know, in the old day, things like shortwave and telexes, and then fax machines. Remember when fax machines came in? We thought, oh my God, this new technology, we can't handle it. <laughs> and then, of course, the World Wide Web. And then I used to run the collection at CSE before I left for CSIS. And in those days, we used to say it was like drinking from a fire hose in terms of the data we had to try to scoop up and, and then get at the, the nuggets of intelligence. Now it's like drinking from Niagara Falls, just the sheer amounts of data. Mm -hmm. So CSE cannot collect on Canadians. That's not part of its mandate. It is a foreign intelligence signals organization. Today, uh, it's changed quite a bit since I left in December of 2000. Uh, 2000. Um, obviously, uh, the cyber aspect has become huge. There's just, Canada's Cyber Command is housed within CSE, and the best and the brightest are there helping to stop you know, denial of service attacks, hacking of Canadian systems. Uh, there's an Office of Counterterrorism in CSE that wasn't there when I worked there. And the other side is, of course, is what we call foreign intelligence, which is essentially determining what are the intentions and capabilities of foreign p parties with respect to Canadian uh, policies, uh, priorities, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to know what the other side is saying so it can help make you make better decisions. CSC really has been the, the secret of organization uh, for many, many years. And I will give them credit. They're, they're doing better today in terms of informing Canadians as to who they are and why we have them. I'll credit Shelley Bruce, the, the, the chief of CSC, and <laughs> full disclosure, she used to report to me as a junior linguist back in 1986, <laughs> that's how old I am. Uh, but she's done a tremendous job, along with Sammy Khoury, who runs the Cyber Centre, and, ha and having conversation with Canadians. CSIS is very different. It, it came out of the old RCMP security service in 1984, when it was decided to civilianize our security intelligence service. CSIS operates both in Canada and abroad. Its job is, as defined under the CSIS Act, is to basically look at four major issues, foreign espionage, uh, foreign interference, terrorism, and what we call subversion, which is trying to undermine Canadian sovereignty and Canadian democratic order. It is allowed to carry out investigations here in Canada or anywhere in the known universe, by the way. CSIS can, can, doesn't, is not confined by Canadian borders. Well. And it does those investigations by using human sources, so talking to people who infiltrate terrorist cells, for example. Uh, it can go to court to obtain warrants. To intercept communications, uh, but it has to prove that that's a very, um, a very serious power that a state has. It's very intrusive, and so CSIS has to prove up to the nth degree why you know Phil Gursky's communication should be intercepted because the, the, they don't, they don't, the courts don't take this lightly. Mm -hmm. And of course, they have relationships with other partners here in Canada. The RCMP is a big partner as well as internationally, um, and they you know they can carry out surveillance. But they're definitely not James Bond. In fact, Jazz, we used to joke at, at CSIS that we used to get three types of applicants who wants to work for CSIS. Mm -hmm. The 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 the, uh, the one third would had watched every James Bond film and wanted to be <laughs> James Bond. And look at me. Do I look like Daniel Craig? No, I bear no resemblance to Daniel Craig. Or, you know, much any other, well, thank you. Or Pierce Brosnan or Sean Connery or the list goes on and on. Um, the second tranche were people who, who thought that we were reading their brainwaves and wanted us to stop. Uh, and the third wave were just good Canadians that knew that CSIS played a vital role in helping to keep Canada safe and wanted to be part of that organization. So uh, it's been around, like I said, it's coming up to its 40th anniversary. And uh, thanks to CSIS, uh, terrorist plots have been stopped and foreign actors stealing our information have been identified and either charged and uh, gone to court or evicted as non-Canadians. So hats off to my former colleagues at CSIS for doing their part to help keep us safe.